All right. So, um, welcome today to what is probably one of the hardest exam components of the CT. Um, it is. This is the one that, particularly for uh, for the uh, white wine or the still wines section, this is unit three. This is a terrifying one that everyone really struggles with. Or this is the this is the big one essentially. So. We've talked about in the other week's uh, exams um, where we've talked about these wines are from one region or country. We've talked about these four wines are of one grape varietal. We've had we, these four wines are of um, one grape varietal but determining quality and these kind of things before. Mm -hmm. This is the mixed bag part. Now, the reason that we're doing this is because Pat here, who is our novice wine drinker, so we have the novice, Dan, who's with me for over 11 years, is the knowledgeable one, and I'm kind of the know-it-all. I've already passed this exam, so I don't have to do it again. Yay me. But it's a, it's a really interesting one to, to follow up on and, and revisit in your head. So, it's essentially four wines. Those four wines are of different grape varietals from different regions in the world but every single wine will come from the classic region that it's from which means that if you get something and it, say it tastes like a Shiraz uh, or a Syrah you're pretty much really looking at Australia which is classically known for Shiraz or Rhone or, or, Rhone, yeah. or, or the Northern Rhone um, you're not going to get a generally you're probably not going to get longer dog Roussillon Shiraz Though they do produce quite a lot of it, for the mixed bag exam, it is usually going to be the grape varietal that is from the iconic region for it. That's kind of the only hints you've got. So, for example, we in this one, today we've got four. We have a white, a red, a red, and a red. Now, we're going to have to walk through each individual wine, and we'll try to essentially guess where it, what it is and where it's from. Um, the, so that's the mixed bag. Generally, the, the mixed bag will be just identify the wines. Um, but as they're coming from classic regions, you'll probably guess which region that it's from as well. Um, they don't generally ask for more, for more. They won't give you any more points for it. Yeah. But it will certainly help your head get around where things are and you can start drilling it into your brain. So without further ado, I'll actually ask Pat quickly to walk us through the four stages of the tasting note that we have to write. Yep. Which is the first three letters are from the mnemonic. CIC. CIC, which okay. stands for? Um, well, that's the colour, so it's um, uh, consist, uh, consist, uh, clarity, or is it? Is it uh, clear? Clear. Or hazy, yep. Yeah, clear, intensity, and colour. Yep, that's correct. Next one is? Um, that's the... Um, What's the mnemonic for it? Um, CIA. CIA. Yep. Um, that's the... It's the nose, that's, so therefore oh, that's the aroma. Yeah, yep. that's the aroma. Then that's the taste. Yep. So the CI, CIA is if it's clean, the yeah. intensity and the aroma. That's the CIA yeah. and A. And then the next part for the palate. Palate. Yep. That's S A T A. Yep. Um, which is and sweet, um, acidity, uh, tannin, and alcohol. Yep. And then the um, B F F F. Uh, balance, flavor. No. Oh, body. Oh, body. Ah, uh, body. Flavor, flavor intensity, intensity flavor intensity, uh, flavors. flavors, and finish. finish. Yep, that's correct. Yep. Then blick is the kind of end result, like yep. well, balance, length, intensity, and uh, uh, complexity. Complexity. Yep. And then quality. Then quality. Yeah. So we're not asking for the quality today because these are all going to be wines of quality, uh, and all these wines are going to be from classic regions too. Yep. That's that's kind of the, the helpful one with the mixed bag you're going to get. Sometimes they will throw. Uh, so Grenache, for example, which can be grown in a lot of places, might come from Longer Dark Roussillon, if it's an old world style. It could also be a Grenache dominant, so these ones could be just dominant. Mm. Um, these are straight varietals or with or dominant wines, so therefore you might get a Chateauneuf de Pat Grenache yep. driven style wine. So you've got Longer Dark Roussillon for a Grenache Shiraz or a GSM. Uh, or GSC really, for Southern Rhone, or it could be a straight Grenache from Australia, or even a straight Grenache coming out of California. Mm. Um, so again, but you'll know, you'll know the old world, new world that we talk about. Yeah. So 
Essentially, I think we should start with the white, probably the one we look at. So, Pat, I'll get you to do your note for that while we have a look at it. And um, so, Dan, what are you um, what are you getting on this one? No, no, I'm just going with it. It's like a real soft sort of um, soft pear. Yep. Definitely pear. So, Pat, it's should, be, main, it's the main. should we onto your notes now? Um, and we're just doing notes, Pat. You have to be able to write these out in 10 minutes. Yeah. So, we're just going to get the notes, so we're not going to make Pat, force Pat to write out 10 minutes. See? So, um, we'll walk through that. As we don't have to write notes. Yeah, there's a little bit of floral there, but I, I think the pear is probably the overriding yeah. flavour that I'm getting from it. Um, I don't get any oak. There's no no vanillin, there's no, you know, any citrus, nuttiness or anything like that in there. I don't think there's any leesiness in there, there's no, no real malo as well. Um, and the body. It's not light body. Just up here, thanks man. It's definitely not a light bodied wine, um, but it, it's medium minus. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, medium, medium minus, I reckon. Uh, you could actually even go light, but I'd, I'd say medium minus because it does have some textural components in there as well. Um, oh wow, that's lovely. That so this is the new pizza from Jenny as well. You want to pass over that over? This is the new one that they're doing in, in uh, Jen's wood fired pizzas. This is the pork and fennel pizza, and uh, yeah, the, the fennel is actually quite. Quite overriding, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, Look I had, here. Oh, and the smell. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I, just, I, I taste tested one of her first um, attempts. Yep. While she was trying to nail down the flavours she was after. Mm. Well, the aromatics in that are fantastic. Mm. Back onto the wine. So, it's definitely dry, it's not sweet, mm. uh, but it's not. And the, the acidity is actually probably a medium, maybe. Uh, like I am getting quite a lot of gustatory sort of sheets watering, but it's not not a searing acid or a raspy acid by the stretch. I had a medium minus, but yeah, medium yeah, minus is good. Yeah. That's fine. Um, it's not very warming, like a no, bit of like twelve. Yeah, I'd probably go 12 and eleven and a half to twelve. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that'd be uh, medium, medium minus. Yeah. Oh, medium, is it medium minus? Yeah, I was eight. trying to remember this from last time. It's eight, uh, so if I like eight's low, eight to ten is medium minus, ten to eleven and a half so is medium. medium. Um, yeah, it's medium, it's probably a good yeah. one. Yeah. Yep. And um, then, then 11, 11 and a half to twelve and a half is medium plus, uh, and then it goes up to that from high. About 13 and a half and up is high. So there might be a bit, I might be slightly wrong. But anyway. Um, so body wise, I. Yeah. It's got a little bit of body to it. A little like, bit of body to it. Yeah. Like, I'd probably go medium. Mm -hmm. um, the flavours, I pretty much, pretty much get like pear, like. Yep. Um, a little bit of white. white I get flour. a few white flowers, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Pear and white flowers, that's, that's about it. The pochin. Pochin. Ah, uh, it's not the same. Um, it's just pretty much up there. It's from last St. Paddy's Day. Yeah, but how much is it? Uh, it's got no price up. Um, yeah, because no, yeah, he's just served and he wants to know how much to charge. Uh, it's good. Ten bucks. It's like 61 percent. Yep. So yeah. Um. um uh, so pear florals. Um, that's that's pretty much it. It's yeah. pretty simple. It's not, yeah. not too difficult. Um. Uh, flavor intensity. Flavor intensity. Yeah. Uh, medium. Yeah. Um, finish. Finish. Um, finishes. Oh, it's like a little bit, but it's not. Yeah. So yeah, I'd, I'd say uh, short finish. Short. Um, and no, simple, short, simple short, finish. Short, simple finish. Yeah. yeah simple being pair again. So, just quickly. Now, try to remember what we've talked about in the past. What wine is simple, pears, um, medium, medium to medium minus body. Uh, very, yeah, so it's not a, not a complex wine at all, but 
what would that suggest to you? What, which wine would it be? Which white wine would it be particularly, obviously? Um, well, it wouldn't be Chardonnay. Nope. Uh, it wouldn't be um, uh, Pinot Gris. Oh, actually, well, Pinot Gris. Uh, that's usually like those got big Pinot Gris is quite heavy. Yeah, um, lots of lots of big fruits to it. The acidity is usually slightly drying, but yeah. it can be if it's from a warmer climate, it can be a little bit heavier and therefore not quite as acidic. Yeah, um, Riesling's usually got that um, lemon um, lime character. Yeah, lemon lime and a little fusel. Yeah. Um, so it's not that uh, Sauvignon. Blanc. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc's got rasping acid, elderflower, yeah. and generally going to have more passion fruits to it. And, yeah, and stone fruits. And it, it's usually a bit more, yeah, that yeah. grasping acidity. Yeah. Um, so without going too far, there's, there is one that you've kind of half said, but it's not, you haven't really said the correct one. Uh, Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, because that Pinot Grigio is uh, less yeah. um, acidity. Less, less acidity. Oh, yeah. no, sorry. It is the... Because I always get those two confused, yeah. Gris and Grigio. So Gris is going to have much more punch stone fruit, yeah. bigger, uh, bigger flavours, richer style mid palate. Pinot Grigio is Italian, which is going to have a slightly yeah. higher acidity, but it's going to be a lot simpler wine. And, and it is and classically as a pear. Yeah, and it's not, um, it doesn't got the high alcohol for yep. New World, so it's Old World. Mm -hmm. um, which would lead it to Italy. Um, yep. Italy, and you, you've got it, you've already said it with Pinot Grigio. Yeah. Oh, but I'm, oh, so I don't need to guess the region. No, no, no. no. But the re as soon as you go, as soon as you go, Pinot Grigio, lower alcohol is going to be Italian. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Yeah. And if oh, I, yeah. yeah. So, so literally. Yes. Um, and then you've got to say why it's Pinot Grigio, and you say as this is a simple wine with a lower alcohol, pear notes, uh, with predominantly pear notes, uh, with some florals, uh, short finish and quite simple. I suggest this is an old world wine, probably Pinot Grigio. Coming from the northwest or north, yeah, from yeah. the northeast of Italy. Yeah, and that would it, and that that that's now where it's from and what it is and the reasons why. What, and what, you've got the reasons yeah. in your notes. Yeah, and they're the ones you refer to all the time. Yeah. So, uh, what regions are in the north of uh, northwest? Of oh, basically you've got Veneto, Friuli, uh, but it can be made in in several areas in Italy. Yeah. Uh, but the classic sort of regions are around Veneto. Okay. So yeah, and that's it. That that is actually, um, you know. Just, Reach the box behind you and reach the. Yep. So that one on the far right. Right there. So that's the hand picked Pinot Grigio from Veneto. That is an Italian. Pinot oh, so they just buying the, the juice and then. Yep. So they, they've actually. Bottling it here. Yeah, they, uh, no, no, it's bottled in Italy. So. Oh, I saw so that one. Yeah. I never realised that. Yeah. So as they um, source from several places, they've got. They decided to do a Pinot Grigio. So that is the uh, Pinot Grigio. It's quite danky, really. It is, yeah. But I always thought that the Pinot Gris was soft. Yeah, I always get those two mixed around. Heavier, stronger flavours. Oilier acid, the acidity is quite... It's heavy on the palate. It's, it's a really dense and heavy wine. If you get the classic Alsace. So it's sort of French, did it? Yeah, nice and danky stuff. No, no, that's actually... Italian was just throw yeah. it all in and go, we have wine. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad call, but uh, no, Alsace is actually kind of, is, is actually German and French. So you can imagine the engineering and preciseness of the Germans with the um, laser fair actions of the French. Mm. Yeah, it'll be quite a, yeah, quite an intriguing sort of community, I guess. But um, actually, truth be told, I haven't been to Alsace, so I'm not 100% certain about the cultural people themselves, but I know that they don't like being called German, they certainly don't like being called French, so they are their own people. Yeah. And they make their wines accordingly. The Rieslings coming from Alsace are really dichotomous from Germany, and obviously the Pinot Gris that they do is going to be completely different from the Italian Pinot Grigio, which is uh, yeah, south of them. Uh, and they also do a, well, famously, a Gewurz Tramina, which is just an, an amazing wine, really light cheese and things like that. Um, which is one wine I am going to have to play and show Pat at some point because it is a classic varietal. So we're going to have to go through some of those. See you later. Yeah, no, I've been for ages. Right, yeah, so on to the next one. So, cut on that. Yeah, I've got like, like a light ruby kind of. Yep. Um, 
playing medium, uh, medium pass intensity, I reckon. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the the smells like I think it's like it's got a bit of a herbal um, herbal thing. Mm -hmm. Like I put forest floor. This, this, mm -hmm. um, I can't really get too many like red fruits. Black plums. Yeah, I thought lots of dark fruits. Yeah, yeah, the dark fruits, but not the red fruits. Mm -hmm. Like, because it's lighter in colour, so I was yeah. expecting red fruits. Um, I'm getting that um, that floral or forest floral that you're talking about. Yeah. It's just overriding. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. Really, yeah, earthiness is coming yeah. in there. But it's overriding, I think, a lot of the It is. Fruit it really yeah. is. Yeah. And there's a lot of dark fruit. There's a lot of dense dark fruits in there. So, let's go to the next um, one. So, Um, should I try and see if the dude's going to do a final model? Because it should not be done by the marks. What are you getting for that? Now I get more of those dark yeah. red berries and cherry. Yeah, I'm getting some, yeah, red, well, not so much cherry. Well, yeah, not sweet. Not like black cherries. Yeah. See those black cherries you get? Not sweet cherries. Yeah, no, definitely sweet cherry. Not cherry ripe right, cherry. No. But that's that's quite dense. That's powerful. Fairly powerful. Um, it's actually really interesting. It's it's a really interesting. Um, and when when you find out what it is, you'll, you'll see why I think this is a really interesting one to have a look at, particularly in comparison to what we did last week. So. Um, so probably the simplest thing to do is is when you're going to the tournament now. You're writing your notes. We are probably a little bit lost at what we're looking at, unless yeah. you've got something jumping out at you that you can say, "Oh, that is obviously." I mainly for um, Pinot Noir. Yep. Based just on the color and the smell. Yep. Um, that's a, that's a good call to start with. Yeah, that's where I'm, and now I'm just trying to prove myself either wrong or right. Yeah. <laughs> probably the simplest thing to do is write your notes out. Just yeah. Literally, what's in the glass in front of you? Don't. Don't go, oh, it's Pinot, so therefore I'm going to write my notes. Because yeah, you yeah. start writing your notes know, based yeah. on Pinot, you write yourself wrong. And you write yourself completely out of it. But if what's there, when you refer back to it, it comes back as Pinot. You've done everything correct. But, you, but basically, we look at in this, this category, start thinking about what wines would fall into this category, even in the, the denseness in colour. And you've said Pinot is one. Uh, what's another one? Saint Gervais. Um, yeah, Saint Gervais. Um, um, what else would be there? Tempranillo. Tempranillo is probably a little bit darker yeah. in, in colours, uh, and but the dense flavours are very Tempranillo esque, aren't they? Mm. They're quite well, the dark red fruits. A lot of tannin yeah. to it, or I get a little bit of tannin. Like There's a little bit of tannin, but it's not massively tannin. But it's which, like a, which Tempranillo does have a fair bit of tannin to it. Yeah, and this has like a like I don't know. This is I'm still getting to figure out the chlorine tannin adjective. Yep. Um, but to me, it seems kind of chlorine. Like cloying, cloying, yeah, cloying. That's usually a sweetness thing. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Maybe drying tannin. I'm just trying to. Just tannin. Try. This is lovely. Around. Yeah, it's just a rounded tannin. You're okay. not getting anything chalky yeah. or, or spritzing it's in that. Right at the top. No. Um, I will say that uh, in that same category as well, you have got Malbecs, which are possible, but Malbecs are a lot meatier than this in general. Yeah. A lot brighter than the red fruits. Um, um, thank you. I mean, if you have a, a Malbec from Cahors, maybe, uh, it might be similar to this, but let's have a look. Malbec's so. not much heavier, I think. Yeah, usually a little bit heavier from New World. Mm. So probably the first thing I'd look at is, it, as I'm writing my notes out, yeah. I start thinking, New World or Old World, New World or Old World. So do you think this is a New World or an Old World wine? I think it's Old World. Yeah. It's yeah. Old World? It's got, it's, some, it's got some sweet fruits to it, though. Yeah, but it doesn't. It's not I big on alcohol. I don't appear to be big on alcohol. Oh, really? Not for me. Yeah. Okay. I get a little bit of a warming like, thing. I get it. a little bit of a warming thing uh, too. It, it could be like, like now you said um, Melbeck yeah. is ringing some bells with, um, oh, what's that Argentine one we did? Uh, the Argentine take the, uh, the Melbeck we did that, the, um, the Ultra. But, I don't know, I just keep going back to Pinot. Yeah, no. It's, if you if you keep thinking Pinot, then that go with the first first guess really. But start thinking about old world, new world. So um, for me, this has got 
I go new world. Sweet herb fruits. Um, it's got a fleshy palate to it. I mean, remember the the peanut we had. Probably mm. about as powerful as this. Peanut. But yeah, the peanut last week that we had for the Burgundian toasty. Oh, I got that sort of nose. Yeah. yeah. I first smelled the peanut last yeah. week. I know, but don't this has more on the front mm. palate, like much more fruit on the front. Yeah. Which could be um, a warmer area in Kokanui, but there's not that many. But it might even be peanut. Let's just walk through it. But something from Old World, New World. And for me, the giveaways that I see for this are sweet fruit or fruit forward, a fleshy palate, um, a higher alcohol component to it, which would lead me to, what do you reckon, Dan? Old World or New World? Well, if, if that's what you're getting, it would be yeah. more, more like a New World. Yep. But yeah, I'm not finding it that same. Mm -hmm. That fruit driven. Ooh. I'm getting the fruits. There's the so much fruit that's almost sweetening the wine. Mm. It does have a bit more tannin at the back. Now. Yeah. And if you have something to eat, mm. then taste it. Makes it yeah, really good. Sadly, during the WSCT exams, they won't give you pizza. Mm. Well, you pay all that money, you don't even get a slice of pizza. No. Cheap. Yeah, they cheap out just by giving us like several hundred dollars, several thousand dollars worth of wine over the course. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, what have you got here? So, I'll just walk us through quickly the top part. Uh, uh, clear, uh, medium plus intensity, light ruby colour, clean. Oh, no, no, you can't have light ruby. Oh, okay. So it's medium plus intensity of yeah. ruby oh, okay. or medium ruby. You can't, you can't, oh, okay. yeah, you yeah. can't sort of say light in there at all. Okay, so just me, medium. So either you can have medium or medium plus oh. or medium minus. Probably go medium. Medium? Okay, so medium ruby. There you go, that's it, done. So next up, okay. we've got clean. Uh, clean. Uh, uh, medium intensity. You reckon? I like for, for the nose on the nose there. Well, I originally went medium plus, but then I thought because you know, it was stick with medium plus, man. Yeah, you've got it now. That that medium plus intensity is definitely there. Yeah. In a medium wine, it would have been a lot more restrained. I mean, basically, well, I think you didn't get like you didn't get the massive fruits of the thing, like yeah. the, like. Well, I more get the herbal qualities, which I yeah. thought made it more of a medium. So if you're looking for really high intensity. Uh, aromatic wines, you get the you get the wine to here, and you start smelling it. Oh, you get the wine to here, you're getting the nose of it, and you stick your nose in the glass. And then you're going to get the medium, and then you have to really <coughs> suck it in. Then you're probably getting you're probably getting a light yeah. one. Okay, um, aromatics are really important. So you give a swirl, and just yep. So about here, so medium plus for me. It's a bit of a cheat. Um, if you've got to have a good nose for it, though, you've got to have yeah. a definitely good nose. If you're having a cold, then you're really going to have to readjust everything you've done. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, then I've got um, aromas of um, herbal, forest floor, and dark fruits. Yep. Um, Do you get any, you know, dark fruits what? Primary notes of dark fruits. Oh, like right um, something. Uh, so I don't get any toast trees or anything plum, like that. Yep, plum and, um, okay. Maybe, yeah, dark cherry, yeah. Right here, it's cool. Um, dry, mm -hmm. um, acidity. I had actually, I had medium plus. I, I thought it had yeah. like a little bit of acidity to it. Yeah, um, I, I think it's got a good bit of acidity. I'm like, my cheeks are warm, warm quite, quite predominant. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's also this making me go, I want yeah. some pizza. That's good. Um, yeah. round of tannins. Uh, yeah. I got medium plus um, alcohol because I, I feel like I had so that. So how strong are the tannins are? Oh. You've got to say how strong the tannins are. So oh, round, okay. rounded is the descriptor. Oh, okay, how yeah. strong the tannins uh, are? I'd probably go medium, medium plus. Medium plus, right, yeah. So, so far you're talking about a really well balanced wine. Yeah. Okay. Um, alcohol, alcohol, I've got medium plus, like yep. it's got that warmingness but doesn't overpower the wine. Yep. Um, Body, I've got medium plus because it's still got that nice mouthfeel. Which um, is pretty odd considering how light the wine is yeah, well, uh, looking. Yeah. I mean, um, what was the colour you had? Colour intensity is definitely medium, not not medium plus, but you've got medium up here anyway, so medium ruby is what you've got. Yeah. And the, 
the body, um, the tendons you've got is medium plus. So that's, you could look at uh, Nebbiolo now, yep. possibly. Oh, yeah. You could have Nebbiolo, that's, that's usually a um, you know, medium or lighter body style with a much more big tendon. But they're usually big and grippy tendons. Is it Barolo? Or? Barolo and Barbaresco. Yeah. Yeah. But they're much more grippy tendons and the yeah. acidity will be quite, will be a lot higher. Mm. Um, but you've got medium plus, you've got medium plus acidity. It could be a well-made Barolo or Barbaresco. Um, but I think the fruit component is yeah. different. Yeah, well, so, I, just from the, like, um, oh. It's got a pretty long finish. It's got a good finish, it's yeah. lovely. It's, this is actually a really good expression of this wine, and particularly a really good expression of the region of the wine. I'm really grateful that I actually got, I took one of these bottles for this actually. Yep. So, so I guess the acidity and the tannin running down yep. the back as well. So just say like long finish with nice acidity. Uh, no long finish and how much complexity? Um, I find it quite complex myself. Yeah, I still get. You say some complexity or I, or quite complex or very complex. So I get a little bit of the dark red fruit, uh, yep. dark dark fruits, yep. and then I get. Um, does the city count as a complexity? It is part of the, the structure for it, yeah. but that's usually that will usually brighten the fruits up. Okay, so that, and then I get the, um, uh, so I get the herbal note though. Like, okay, so you've got two descriptors in there, so quite complex. So. Yeah, so. So yeah, with the finish though. So. Oh yeah. Long finish with, with quite, um, quite com com yeah. with, with quite complexity. With some complexity, so basically. Um, I find it yeah quite complex one, yeah. So next though, uh, uh, essentially now that's that's essentially you stop now trying to figure out what the grape is. You said what do you think it is? I keep going back to Pinot. Pinot? And what region would show those qualities of Pinot Noir? I was thinking like maybe New Zealand. Um, yeah. so where in New Zealand would you would you suggest this would come from? So Knowing that Marlborough is going to be a much yeah, lighter colour. I was thinking much Central Otago. Or... Central Otago. Yeah. That's a that's a pretty good call. Um so, if you want to grab the next one out down across there, I think. Uh, I think it's the white cap. Ta -da. Ta -da. Is this is Picnic. Two paddocks. This is Two Paddocks Picnic's Pinot Noir from Central Otago. Oh, sweet. Nailed it. And he's actually a very good. And as this is the. This is actually the entry level for. Oh, God, the actor. Um, yes. Sam Neill. From Sam Neill's vineyards, uh, so this is Sam Neill's entry level to his Pinot, and I find that an exceptionally good entry level into mm -hmm. his level into his wines. It doesn't make a huge amount of them, yeah. but excellent, excellent expression mm -hmm. of Central Otago Pinot. Um, so really, really impressed. Really I wasn't impressed. Even thinking New Zealand. What were you going for? Oh, I, just, I had no idea really, yeah. because I decided it was old world to start with anyway. It was... I was on the wrong track if together. you'd actually gone old world and if you'd known enough about Volnay, you could have gone for a village uh, wine from Volnay, but it was just a bit too fleshy of the palate. Mm. That's about it. The fruit was powerful and dense, I which Volnay is renowned for. Quite light and easy. Oh, for Pinot, I'm talking about. For Pinot, yeah. for Pinot it is oh. quite powerful and dense. Um, but it was the, the sweet notes as well as the, the body, the fleshiness of the, the palate. It was probably mm. the only thing that driven back to the, the New World. Mm -hmm. And when you go New World with that depth of colour for Pinot, there's only really one spot, and that's Central Targo. Right, the next one. Oh, this is a bit of a different one. I have to readjust now. Yeah, and that's the thing is that you should readjust. A lot deeper in colour than that Pinot. Mm-hmm. Mm yeah. That's almost purple. Yeah, well, I put. I, I didn't know if I could put dark garnet or did I just put garnet. Yeah. Um, like, is there one higher than garnet or? Yeah, it starts getting into the ready brown colour, so you can deep garnet. Yeah, I oh, deep garnet. Yeah, I'd go with that. I don't think I'd go. I don't think any tinge of brown, but. Do you want to grab the next glass and have a look and see if you think it's deep garnet or not? The last one can't yeah. see through. Yeah, the last one you can't see through. That's deep. Yeah. So garnet then deep garnet. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um. Mm. High garnet. 
it's actually deep down there. So therefore you want to put either medium plus or medium. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, clean. It's not as intense as I thought it would be. No one uses as intense as I thought it was good. It's good seeing it either. Like, really? Like, intensity, I'd probably go like medium minus. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just evaluate the glass, what's yeah. in the glass. Don't try and guess what it is until you're finished. So you know, things will pick out in your head that you go, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But yeah, I go, don't make a dead set decision. Yeah. I go yeah, like, it's not intense, but... As in, yeah. it doesn't seem very intense, does it? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm so it's like, whoa, way more than that last thing. Yeah, but going off like what I thought I was going to get, like, I was expecting kind of like cabinet level, like... like Smack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, Romans, uh, I get like plum, um, dark fruits. Oh, uh, look, in, look, as you said, uh, cherries and into this one, like black cherries into this one, what are you getting from this one? I'm getting a, a very similar structure to it, a similar note, except it's a little bit brighter, and um, I am getting a fair bit of oak in this one too, actually, mm -hmm. surprisingly. I get a little bit of vanilla. Like, so, you yeah, know, make that in. So, the Romans vanilla, that's obviously a secondary note. Um, but in the primary notes, I'm definitely getting sort of, there's a herbal quality in there, but there's also, like, it's a herbal quality as well as you're getting some, it's it's a cherry note. Yeah. It's cherry. I mean, it could be a dark cherry, I reckon, or dark or red cherry, but it's definitely a cherry note in there. Yeah. Um, I get a little bit of mulberry. Yeah, okay, yeah. mulberry's in there, yeah. Those underripe mulberries? Yeah, yeah. You know, those kind of like green white. Green, like, green mulberries, yeah. yeah. So, and that is, that's a very valid point to say too. You can have underripe as uh, descriptor, underripe mulberries if you wish to, because then they'll know all green mulberries what they're talking yeah. about. Um, that would bring a bitterness to it, I would think. Well, it would bring, it, it would bring a real tart acidity mm -hmm. in there, but whether or not, it's just the nose, whether it's on the palate for acidity is completely different. So, acidity wise. I think it's, it's up there. I get a lot on the thumb. Mm -hmm. um, I and go medium plus. Yeah, my, my mouth is watering, mm -hmm. like, like really watering. Tannin structure. So, this is going to be the interesting one. Because, I mean, we've, we've claimed the depth of colour to be uh, uh, medium intensity. Plus. Medium plus. Medium plus. So, let's have a look at the tannin structure. Is the tannin structure big? Yeah. Oh, well, actually, yeah. not the, the what tannin structure is. Yeah, it's like, how, how much tannin are you getting? Oh, not overly. No. Like, so it's not like Cabernet level. No. So therefore, you kind of looking at it going, well, it's got a deep color, or deeper color, like a medium plus color, but it's not got medium plus tannins. Mm. Uh, again, this this sort of can drive you back towards sort of Barbaresco and Barolo, Montepulciano. Um, not near a Diablo because that's usually no oh, near a Diablo, but it's usually a lot more purple. Um, so yeah, I again, what it, what tannin level do you have? Medium tannins. I got medium. Yeah, medium tannins, and anything about the tannins that you find distinct. Um, a bit gritty. Yeah. I guess. Yep. Yeah. Just say gripping tannins, medium gripping tannins. Now, the next part is, is uh, the alcohol, and how high do you reckon the alcohol is? I get like a little bit of warming, but not. Um, actually. So, it's medium plus is. Uh, medium plus is essentially uh, 12 and a half to 13. Sorry, sorry, it's, uh, sorry, 12 to, 12 to 13, essentially. Probably go in that uh, range. Yeah, so medium plus. Um, body, it's definitely got a lot of mouthfeel to it. Mm -hmm. So I'd probably go medium plus. But the actual palate weight itself, it's got a lot of flavours. Is it actually a heavy bodied wine, or is it a, like, are you getting a, a like a real dense note on your palate? Is it actually weighing your palate down, or is it just a medium? It's more medium. It's much more medium for me. Yeah. 
because you, you got to define the flavor intensity and tannin structure the alcohol all define kind of you know you can all make the body look a lot different so you once you pull it apart you sort of see it going i reckon it's a medium body wine i don't think it's a medium plus or a or a high um body i reckon it's medium wine yeah because the tannin is there but it's not high the acidity is there it's probably a little bit higher than 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 uh, the tannin structure the alcohol is only medium plus so it's it's pulling it further that way i'd say medium mm. it's a little bit a little bit all over the place mm. when it comes to it um, i don't get a lot of alcohol in there no i don't get much alcohol in there at all i just got that like kind of warming look, as it goes down look it's that's absolutely fine yeah. this room it's yeah. just fine yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i think just coming from that one uh, actually the pinot last one just seemed a Ooh. decent the Pinot uh, last one was yeah. like, was, was what was Pinot? Uh, yeah. About 30 and a half, 14, I think. I should put the eyes on. Because I keep forgetting to bring my glasses. Um, no, it's only 13. Yeah. Oh, really? yeah, so, I, right. I reckon it's probably about that sort of level of alcohol. So, I reckon uh, medium, medium plus is quite right for yeah. that Body, I reckon medium myself. Yep. Um, um, flavours, I still get like the dark. Um, yep. So, Essentially, it's almost exactly the same as yeah. the aromas, and you might notice this as a theme. If you pick it up on the aroma, you start writing out essentially the taste yeah. of that for your aromas again. You go, "No, oh, this is so obvious." It's the when you use the tasting. That's kind of when you pick up the additional flavors of, particularly the secondary winemaking, particularly any tertiary notes that come through are generally going to be a lot more on the palate, um, and some of the meatiness and things like that you can get off of certain grape varietals will turn up on the palate and won't turn up on the nose. Hello. So it's it's kind of, you're right, you know that, but you look for anything additional in there. Um, finish, length of finish. The tannin sticks around. For yeah, while, but the tannin sticks around, but the, the actual flavour. I'll, uh, I'll lose the flavours flavor. pretty quick, so yeah. would that be like a long finish with no. simple complexity? Or? No, you definitely would go to, if the flavours aren't there but the tannin is, you could happily say medium length finish of tannin yeah. with short finish of the fruit. You can do that. It's kind of a, not, it's not really hedging your bet because you are saying what's there, but do you find it to be a complex finish or a simple finish? It doesn't help you narrow it down the yarn. Not really, but it's simple. Yeah. It is a simple finish yeah. so. of tannin only. Hmm. So you, do, you can do so. Right, yeah. Um. So, now we're, we're at a bit of a loss of where we are, I mean, essentially. Yeah. So, let's let's have a look. Probably, literally, let's go through the notes and break down where things are. And the first thing to do is probably look at where it's from. Where do you reckon it's from? And it's just a simple question of old world, new world. Um, I think because, like, the lower alcohol for the um, for what I thought it was going to be. Yep, lower alcohol, yeah. yes, you got that there. So, I'd put it... Um, yeah, old world, but hold on, you can make lower alcohol. I mean, that's that's a lower alcohol yeah. style of wine. So, but, but what else would it's suggest? Got quite that? punchy fruit. It, yeah, yeah, it's got some it fruit to it. Doesn't last about, a long time. But what about the acidity? Um, what was the acidity? You uh, medium plus. Medium plus acidity. Is that lower alcohol? Um, the body of it is also what? Uh, medium. Medium. Medium or medium minus? You got the, you got oh, medium. I got medium. Okay. Yeah. So, again, light, it's so not a fleshy palate, it's quite a medium bodied palate. Um, it's got low, It's got a, a, a lower lower alcohol mm. than, a, than a high alcohol sort of thing you're expecting. The tannins are gripping, and probably the most predominant part about this one is the tannin that's in there. Mm. The acidity is higher. Than you would expect to see from this from a new world wine because remember as it's hot you get high fruit and lower acidity and though we balance acidity up to try and balance the fruits off we don't generally find a huge natural acidity running into it so new world or old world or well, old world must be old then. old world okay good call so what you talked us into it i did talk <laughs> you into it but I, i'm actually walking you through it so yeah. i had to think about it because um, pat's got them all here i'm just reading his notes yeah and looking at it, you know, you've got a medium plus acidity, which suggests, okay, so it's either been heavily acid adjusted, 
or it's from the old world because it's also a lower alcohol. So therefore that would be just, okay, that would be lower alcohol, higher acidity, and you're definitely looking at old world wines. Yeah. And then you look at the body, a media body, it's like, well that's definitely an old world wine. A big plush body would be definitely a new world wine. So higher alcohol, higher body, lower acidity would definitely be a new world wine. Okay? Yeah. Right, now let's go from there. Well, I'm What's thinking, you got? Oh, well, I was thinking um, um, Italian again. Yeah. Um, is it Barolo? Or, uh, Barolo uh, is Nebbiolo. the more powerful. And Nebbiolo is the great. Yeah, ne Nebbiolo. Yeah, and yeah. Nebbiolo is the great. It's not a bad call, um, but what's the tannin structure? Is the tannin uh, structure high? Uh, medium gripping, yeah. So, so therefore that would say no. Yeah. Barolo is high tannin. You will what's always the, see it. Montepulciano, is that the... Montepulciano, yeah. It's a, not a bad call. It's from the northwest of Italy. Northeast from Italy, sorry. Yeah. Um, I seem to remember Monty's having more, mind you, I've had yep. Monty's, but having more fruit. And yep, that's correct. Flavor. And much more dark fruits, um, not just not cherries and a herbal note. Mm. What's the one down by the um, the heel? Um, down at Puglia, you've got Primitivo, Primitivo. or Negro Amaro. And Negro Amaro doesn't turn up in this exam as far as I've seen. But Primitivo does. But Primitivo is all fruit and very little finish. Yeah. So, and it's not high in tannin. Um, um, what else is around there? So you've got Sagrantina Barbera. That's actually not a bad call. That's from it's Piedmont. Dark, is it? it is quite dark, and he has. It's actually. What's the Barbera we had a while ago? Uh, that would have been Australian Barbera. That would have been from Pizzini or. We did have Pizzini Barbera for a while. We did have for a while, yeah. But this is from classical regions, so this is definitely not going to be. Um, and it's a soul world, it's definitely not going to be Australian. Yeah. Italian's a good call though, I think Italian's a mm. very good call for this wine. Um, I'm just trying to narrow it down. Like, so, um, the so Sardaras, um, can't do just Sangiovese, I don't think it's Sangiovese, it doesn't have the high, like, like, Sangi seem to have a bit more fruit. Like they they can do, they can do, usually it's red yeah. cherry. We used to drink red, yeah. red cherry and mint is the big thing that I find in Oh, sour cherries and minces is another one you might see. But what have you written for your um, well, I've got vanilla? You've got dark cherry there, and then the underripe Mold, mulberries. Yeah, so that has a bit of bitterness. Uh, so right. that, that probably the acidity almost coming in on that one, but you've got dark cherry. Yeah. San I did say there was a herbal quality to it as yeah. well. It could be San Gervais. It could also be maybe Sagrantino. Um, I've never had one of those. Exactly. Or have I? <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe you started buying wines. Yeah. What's that one that, that Alan used to do for Amadio? Agrianico, right? Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, that was good, but that's a lot meatier. So, in the end though, we've actually pretty much nailed down to a country of Italy. Yeah. Because you've, you've, said, you've shown that, and you've said the cherries. Yeah. Um, so I'd do San Gervais. Yeah, San Gervais or Barbera. San Gervais, okay, so Barbera or San Gervais? 50 50 shot, which one? Um, I, I haven't had an old world San Gervais, so. Yeah, like, okay. Um, actually, to be fair, I don't think I've had an old world Barbera either. No, there you go. Yeah, so. So it's a 50 50 shot. San Gervais is probably more popular, so I'll just go with that. By the way, if you do say something like San Gervais, mm. um, and it turns out to be a Barbera, and the, the guy's looking at your notes going, yeah, it could be either or for this one. Um, and because some grapes are very could similar. Be a blend. No, well, it, I it, it probably is a blend if it's old world anyway. But what they do is they actually look and say, for example, if you go uh, Shiraz, but you might say um, another red varietal that's got some similar characteristics, mm -hmm. they give you part part yeah. um, So either way, you, you're kind of going that way. So well, that's. Just based on the vanilla, like yeah. as well, um, which indicates that could be one they can't go. Like. No, no, next one, dude. The cork. The so cork. we've had them in line all the way up to. All the way up there, so cork. <laughs> yeah, because they've got the same. It's yeah. a reality. I guess. Yeah. The well, I was going to say. The other night it seems so much more tannic than that. I was thinking as well, um, the because the vanillas. Yep. Um, secondary winemaking. Yep. Yeah, probably indicate a bit more like. Um, Barbera is a lot simpler with its winemaking. Yeah, but, and but a Chianti like something a bit more 
well yeah. renowned. So it, it is. And this is a Chianti Reserva. Um, so yes, this is D O C G. Um, it is not a Chianti Classico, which is probably more what you're going to get, but it is actually a Chianti. So this is the Viticolorina, uh, Viticoliero, no, Viticoliori, Sensi Aratini Chianti Reserva. Uh, it's 2015, it's a DOCG. It is actually good, a great little wine, um, not ridiculously expensive either, which is nice. But um, here, I'll grab another one of these. Uh, but you will find that it's made with some oak. Because um, it's a reserva, and that's the thing is that Chianti, like like entry level Chianti, um, DOC, even DOCG entry level Chianti, won't show much oak. But if it's a reserva, generally you'll see oak over the top of it, and it's a good way to determine quality. So if you had that Venerans turn up in a Chianti tasting, and you get like a light Rosso, uh, which is essentially base base, and then you get a, a Chianti and a Chianti Classico and a Chianti Reserva. The amount of oak was actually kind of what you're going to be looking at to see the definition of the levels of quality as such. So, well, I took one of them home the other night. And yep. It tasted way more tannic than what mm-hmm. it does tonight. Okay. Um, well, maybe maybe it's just palate. Yeah, I'd say palette, so. Yeah. Yeah. But again, I mean, Pat had nailed it down to Italy, and I, that was unprompted. Mm. So it, was, it wasn't too bad. It was really good. Next up. Um, This is kind of the gimme. You always find a gimme in these exams, and this is kind of the gimme. Just off the nose, anyone anyone want to start making some suggestions of what they what it could be or where it could be from? Let's sort the bottle <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, well, you'll see you'll sound well, I'm really intelligent now. <laughs> Definitely dog fruits. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, plum. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually thought this, that this was what I know it is now. Mm-hmm. Before I even dips in. Yep. Do you get any herbal notes in there as well? A little bit. Like, so tomato tomato bush. Mm hmm. Uh, Tomato leaf kind of thing. Mm hmm. I really wanted to to pull out a a, a first crew Bordeaux for this. Mm -hmm. So it's not a first crew. But as we're, sell- we're, as we're selling people, to work, it could still be a Bordeaux. But <laughs> selling people to taste. Selling people to taste yeah. part, it's like, oh geez, I don't think we can afford to actually sell that one. You just keep looking at that empty one, mm-hmm. don't you? You want to have another one of those. Last night we did a. Um, last night? No, no, last night was your place. No, the night before, Monday. No wonder I got a hangover yesterday. We can't work out what night was yeah. what. Yeah. We're struggling. That night we were drinking. No, well, night we were drinking. Mm-hmm. Any day with a Y, essentially. <laughs> so we actually had a tasting with uh, Mike Presswines on Monday night. And um, absolutely adored, particularly the MP1 Shiraz. I think it's, it is the most awesome one. Yeah, yeah, we don't sell it. We, we're not selling it now. Yeah, we're not selling it. This is our private stash. This is our private stash. We, we bought everything that we could of it. It was just delightful. We can treat it like the soul growers years ago. We'll just pull that rack up there. <laughs> yeah, leave it there for Leave it there for 10 years. No, you may not touch this. Go away. Um, but even the Shiraz was a great little coffin. But once you've had the MP1, it's just so hard to get back. It's just like, oh, wow. Um, at the end of the day, I... I was impressed with the reds, particularly from White Press. But I think he really knows how to do Shiraz. Yeah, the yeah. Shiraz looks stand out. Um, really Pinot was really good as well. Actually, the Pinot was actually surprised me because that was the one that really jumped out of the glass when I first tried it. I was like, wow, that is Pinot. That is Adelaide Hills Pinot down to the mark. And looked at the price and went, holy crap, that's Adelaide Hills Pinot that I can afford. Mm. It's really good. 
Okay, so how are we doing with this one there, Pat? So what are we... Um, so you've got dark fruits, herbal... Um, what herbal so quality? I, I, I was, yeah. was going to say tomato... Oh, actually, or, like, maybe... Tomato's fine, you can say tomato bush is gone, to Maybe a little bit minty, actually. Hi. We'll throw mint in there if you wish. I don't know, I don't know. Pick one, write them yeah. both. Well, if you think there could be both of them, do it. So I just don't know. It's a minty tomato bush. A minty, yeah. well, yeah. Mint and tomato bush, yeah. Um, I got dry. Yeah, oak on the nose. Mm, get that. Yeah, massive oak on the nose. So this is what I'm looking at going, where's your oak? Barrel. Oh, the secondary. Yeah. Um, I get I get cedar, I get vanilla, I get nuts. I get nuts. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's that's your oak components. Oh, okay, so nut goes under oaks. Yeah. That's oh, oh, that. Yeah. So yeah. Cedar particular, mm. I reckon. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. We get that cedar. No, that's just yeah. And it's good oak too. It's not not bloody tea bag. Stuff. Yeah. Although that being said, though, I still want to go down to Yaron to go have a look there through their winery because but for the Chardonnay. For the oh, the Chardonnay, yeah, like it, the dude just nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> he really yeah. did. Just I was so impressed with the wines from there yeah, at the price points, particularly. But Jesus Christ, just it's just so lovely. They're really, really good. I think we have to go for a visit. We we'll have to do that before the end of the year. In the financial year, that is. <laughs> okay, so acidity? Uh, probably medium plus. <laughs> yeah, medium plus, good call. Uh, is there anything in particular? Do you find the acidity prickling? Do you find the acidity yeah, searing? A little bit of prickling. Um, okay, just write that down if you yeah. got it. Yep. It never hurts to have a descriptor because that way it'll also prompt you in your mind back to yeah. um, your flavour sensations. Because when you're writing, you might have a medium plus, medium minus. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the, the it's the descriptor that you're going to go medium plus prickly. Oh yeah, no, it's right. And it also had these flavors on top of it. Words can evoke memories as well. Um, the most thing that, that evokes memories is actually your your nose and palate is actually the most evocative of, of memories. Yeah. So um, what's high, what's high alcohol? Is that well, high alcohol is thirteen and a half to okay. and above. So okay, that's high then. Yep, high is a good call. Um, balance. I think. Body. Oh, body. Sorry. Um, it's not overwhelming, but it's still pretty high. Like some. I'd say medium plus. Yeah. It's got a medium plus body. It's got. See, this is one where the fruit, the acidity, and the tannin are all. Can't talk. My tongue's stuck. To the <laughs> <laughs> are all drawing it in together, and this is what what creates the body. So flavour intensity is next. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, just make sure you put, yeah. write the. Don't forget to put flavour intensity. Put the fruit, fruits and flavours down again, but you need to have flavour intensity in there. And start getting used to writing primary notes, yeah. then secondary notes, and then tertiary notes. Yeah. Um. This is the thing with with doing um, wine evaluations and exams. There's a lexicon that they use, try to stick within it, but if you find something that is so obviously of your cultural um, background, so for example, if you if you taste eucalypt, write eucalypt, even though that might be some sort of Vietnamese mint or something, I don't know, whatever, whatever they, they're saying it is, um, write down that, because whilst it's, it, this is marked, all the exams are marked internationally, but if they go, Here's the, here's the um, Oceanic or <coughs> Australasian exam, and the guy's got Euclid on the nose here. Oh, I kind of get what Euclid is, so it's fine. They'll, they'll sort of do the give for it, but there is a lexicon to use, uh, and that lexicon is really important to use that lexicon in the exams. Um, making things up can always be dangerous, because you might go, oh, really meaty, light, Flavors of and you go well. Hold on, you just said it's meaty. Is it meaty or is it light? Is it meaty? Is it light? What, what are you talking about? Yeah. Hints is a good word to use too. If you get a massive fruit weight of say blackberries, but then you get like hints of florals and or hints of nutmeg, write hints because whilst it does make it a bit more complex, you might have a wine that's not ready to drink yet. And it'll have hints of these things which will improve and, and come over over time. And with the age process, they'll come more to the fore. Um, which is then, when it, if they're asking, for example, 
does this wine, is this a drink now wine, or should you drink now may age, or you know, requires time. Literally, if you've got hints of stuff there that are really pleasant, but some in the background, you might say, this is too young to drink now. You know, you know whether they're coming or going, these flavours. Usually they're coming if you get them on the nose or the hint, but you'll get if you get things like big caramels and toffees and coffees coming through, yeah. they're the tertiary notes. So, but it's essentially drink now, may age. Um, if it's, you're only getting hints of those things, not even hints of, of tertiary notes coming in, but but hints of other primary characters that would probably come through, you probably want to go. It might be a bit too austere, a bit tight. Yeah. It requires age. This would require. This would benefit from aging. Which as we said, benefit yeah. from aging. Here we go. So um, what are we up to anyway? So up to. Uh, yeah, we've done it. So we've done the fruit flavors, which we've done. Flavor intensity is high for you. Yep. Yeah. Mm. I'm not going to deny that. That's that's a good call. I think it's no. a very good call for that. And then I got a long, complex finish of um, dark fruits, herbal, yep. and secondary notes of nuts and cedar. Yep. Um, um, so that would suggest. Well, the only old world wine that like Cab Franc, but I don't think so. Cab Franc is actually a lot lighter, but it is red rounded fruits. Yeah. Uh, and the red rounded fruits or. Uh, I've got dark fruits. Dark fruits. Yeah. So, no, yeah. so that's the only. Um, New World. I'm going Australian. Australian. Okay. And what would Australian? Um, well, because of the chalky tannins, I'm going Kunawara. Kunawara Cabernet. Cab- 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 yeah, Kunawara yeah. Cab. Um, okay, Dan, throw it over. I'm gonna go Kunawara Cab. We can maybe to Georgia. Yeah, to Georgia family. Oh my oh, god! Who the thunk? Kunawara Cab Sav, which is I think probably one of the best buys um, for Cabernet in the store that we've got. In fact, if someone comes in and asks for me a really good Cabernet, yeah. that's 30 bucks or less, that's the one I wish you'd grab. It was my go-to for a while, and then I come, kind of just forgot about it, like, just in favour of the easier style, like McLaren's, yeah. but it's good to come back to it. Yeah, and this is a great food wine, too. You've been enjoying that bar one. Yeah, you have, actually, yeah. That bar was really good, actually. That is exceptionally good. Yeah, and for the price. So, essentially, at the end of the day, you would have passed. Right. You've done... You know pretty much everything. You probably struggled the most with the Pinot Grigio. Mm. The Pinot Noir, I was actually trying to lead you away and you still managed to get there. The Chianti is going to be a bitch. Um, it's going to be a hard one to do, especially as it's a reserver with oak mm. on it because the oak, you don't, you generally see oak only on good wines mm. from the old world. In Australia, we see oak on a lot of our wines. Um, so that, that was a bit of a harder one, particularly as the depth of colour is a lot deeper than most counties that you're going to see. It was really deep. It was a really deep colour. Yeah. But the give me was definitely the Cabernet. So I found that... Um, well, as soon as I had the tannin, you get yeah, the chalky. Chalky tannin. Yeah. Yeah, you get that. So, um, um, very, very impressed. Well done, Pat. Mm. So your education is coming along quite nicely. Mm. Well, the, yeah, the thing with the, um, the Sanjay Bay... There's something wrong with that cider, it still tastes like Oh, uh, yeah, no, um, I'm waiting to hear back. I've got to check my emails. Um, they just sent us a cake with the same expiry date as the one we already had. Ah, uh, okay, thank you. So, um, yeah, no, when I was doing the, um, the same That was Mel, that was our, one of our bar mates. <laughs> so, um, the thing that, um, the thing that put me onto Saint Gervais, especially Chianti, was just mm-hmm. the vanilla, so yeah. secretary, secretary wine making. Yep. Um, they probably don't do that in a lot of the wines. Um, um, so, if, especially if they're selling worldwide, you think of they're doing a Chianti or something like that, mm-hmm. which would mean it would be San Gervais. Yep. So that's that's been a good one. So uh, well done, Pat, and well, thank Pat. you all for for tuning in today. I I must admit that was it's actually this is the hardest exam to cop um, for Unit Three. If you can do this, it means that you've drunk a lot of wine from a broad spectrum. And this is the one thing, I did pick wines that were all really dichotomous from each other. The worst thing to do is to get Barbaresco, Chianti, Montepulciano, and Barbera. Mm. And you're sitting there going, oh, and you're going to be pulling it apart in the minutiae to try and get it. But when it comes to why it's a Cabernet, you need to refer to your notes mm. and write down exactly what's in your notes. Yeah. Um, why is this a Cabernet? Because due to the dense colour, which would suggest a thicker skin grape, 
the intensity of the black fruits, the higher acidity um, would suggest, uh, uh, black fruits acidity, the secondary wine making that's used upon this wine uh, would suggest to be a good quality new world wine of Cabernet. Uh, and you've got to take that from your notes. Mm. You can't go, oh, this is a Cabernet. You can't try that because out or of the seven... Just, you could just look in that box. Well, yeah. But I mean, but at, the seven, at the, the seven points you're getting for it, you say it's a Cabernet, <clears throat> that's two points. So you've got five points to pick up there. You well, said the five points why. The Chalky Tannin was the one that led me to... So yeah, so literally water. Chalky Tannin would have led you to Cabernet. I got prickling, medium plus prickling acidity. So high, the, the prickling of high acidity. Um, dark fruits, herbal, tomato bush, yep. nuts. Yep. Um, and deep garlic color. Yep. And you might um, get, you'll probably pick up an additional point for a right higher... Well, you know, yeah, that's yeah. the best area for yeah, that's, Cabernet. Yeah, yeah. 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 you get it. No, well, it's not, yeah, it's not Mogra River or anything. No. But, yeah. So there, that's that's really good. And you might get a margarita of wine, and again, yeah. it'll be a really good thing. But these are all going to be wines of quality from regions that are iconic for them. Unlike the Master of Wine exam, where you might just get Jacob's Creek Cabernet, Jacob's Creek Chardonnay in it, and McQuiggan's Red. Yeah, McQuiggan's Red. No, no, not McQuiggan's Oh yeah, probably. Actually, McQuiggan's Red. It's a blend. Yeah. And at that point, you are really going to be kicking things uphill to try and work out exactly where it's from or what it is. Anyway, thank you for today, guys. Mm. Have a good one. Uh, we're going to now finish off the rest of these bottles because uh, oh, I hate to go and waste. Mm. You don't want them going off. Especially that one with the cork. Yeah, that yeah. one with the cork. Yeah, I think we'll have to have that. Anyway, cheers. Um, drink well. Drink like you're savvy. See you next week. Yeah.